Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Lesson Picks Show and Tell. Uh, we are um, we are doing our first trial run with this, with Zoom and Facebook Live and and guests. It's right? all new. It's all new. So uh, everybody, please uh, give us your 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 patience today, uh, and uh, we appreciate it. But thank you for joining us. It's seven o'clock. It's uh, Monday. April 9th, our daughter's birthday. Yes, Allie's birthday. She's 19, last of the teens. Right. And um, tomorrow we are going to be in, ta in Tallahassee. So we are not going to do a, uh, a live show and tell tomorrow night. So our next one will be Wednesday and then Thursday and then Friday. We've got great people. we got folks from Montgomery County. And um, Julie is going to be on again on Friday. We've got folks from uh, Cleveland. A bunch of interesting people who are going to be on the show and tell. For those of you who are just joining, this is a really short half hour where we're going to show you lesson pick stuff that our users are making and uh, not going to spend a whole lot of time on demos or trainings, just show it off. Cool. And right? it's the premiere, so it's going to be the best. It is the premiere. It is our, our best. We, we, have, we are cheating tonight. We have, uh, we have uh, Julie Marzano and Katie Milliken who are ringers. Ringers? Yeah. Phenomenal. They are ringers. Uh, if you have any questions for us or for them, feel free to type them into um, into Facebook. I'm going to say hi here on Facebook, hi guys, because I have learned that if you don't do that, you don't see any updates. So, But if you have any questions on Facebook, ask us. Uh, we are going to show some stuff Julie's made. We're going to show some stuff Katie's made, and then you're going to show some stuff. Well, thanks for the notice on yeah. that one. So you're gonna I you're gonna show uh, some new templates <laughs> that we just added yesterday. Uh -huh. We're gonna do one template each night this week and have oh, them up and running. Okay. Be good. Yeah, I like it. All right. All right. Good deal. Um, so everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce uh, Julie Marzano. Julie, can you turn your camera on? Hi. How are Hi. you? Hi. Hello, good everyone. To see you. So uh, Julie is a uh, co-founder of uh, Fine Motor Bootcamp. A uh, speech path and OT practice. Do you have any other uh, specialties there? Um, we, we dabble a bit in assistive technology. So we go from the very young to complex needs to the older population. We gotcha. kind of dabble in everything. Cool. Well, I see you on the AT side at AT Makers as well. So um, we, we see Julie a lot. And actually, her videos have been uh, kind of awesome. One of the reasons Thank we you. picked you and reached out to you is you're showing our, we don't pay Julie anything. Right at all, but no, no she affiliation. Goes, she makes these great videos uh, showing off what she's doing with her clients. Uh, you know, live videos on Facebook all the time, and it's always our stuff. I highly recommend if you want some great ideas, she's <sighs> got them, and go to Fine Motor Boot Camp on Facebook because it's just wonderful. Thank you. We need to get around to adding those videos to YouTube, but if you just scroll through, you'll be able to see them. Yep. And so we'll add a link to this after I'm done with it. But let me uh, let me kill my uh, video and let you have the screen here. Uh, we're going to leave our mics on and uh, if you can show what you're up to. So again, Bill and Lori, thanks for having me. I'm excited to um, share what we've created as a team. I'm an occupational therapist and my sister's a speech pathologist. And a lot of these activities we've created together or she's created. Um, Today, we'll focus more, I would say, on the early childhood population. Uh, and then Friday, we'll focus more on our students with, or our clients with more complex um, needs. But from an early childhood perspective, Fine Motor Bootcamp, our philosophy is doing hands-on things. Um, you know, the, not as much the paper pencil types of things. And we've really been able to embrace lesson picks and the way they set everything up to make it a very like motor-based, um, fine motor language gross motor activities you can do with lesson picks um, to be able to reach out to our early childhood population. And I'm just gonna share some of the stuff we've come up with. And I'm thrilled that they started these um, clothespins cards. I'm sure you guys will share them. But yeah. um, I think the best part of lesson picks, and I think in, in an early childhood classroom, photographs are extremely powerful to young children. They're very motivating. It's they recognize themselves. They can put themselves into a story with a photograph of themselves. So I love that we can put pictures 
in lesson picks because then I have them all in one spot. I don't have to search a JPEG on my computer or pull something off and send it um, out to get printed. I can just say, oh, I can drag this, 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 this into my tray and make whatever I need. So some of the things that I've made with photographs, and again, I think this is something that's very important at the beginning of a, a school year, especially your preschool classrooms. Photographs, again, are so meaningful that, um, you know, like we make picture blocks. So you see that I just took all my kids' pictures and I Thank printed you. them out on one of their templates. And then we make picture blocks because blocks are an important part of a preschool classroom and a kinder, any early childhood classroom. So adding their blocks or their pictures to blocks makes, you know, a bridge turning into them crossing the bridge in the three Billy Goats Gruffs. Um, you can, they can manipulate these. They can use these as um, game pieces. So if they're playing Candyland, they can be the Candyland piece by using these blocks. Super awesome, so simple. I just print them out, cut them out, and tape them on like one inch, all different size blocks. Another thing that, um, loose parts is new, now a, um, an area that people are dabbling in with early childhood, and it's like simple materials. And rocks and stones and those types of things are really popular. So we also made um, student stones. And again, you give verbal presets with young kids when you have these types of materials in the classroom and you show them the expected behaviors. But what we do is we just take Mod Podge, we printed out all the pictures on lesson picks again, we made them to the size that we needed to. And again, it's a one shot thing, it's so easy. Then the old school go to CVS, get everything printed. You can print it right there. We just Mod Podge the rock, put the picture on, Mod Podge it over top, and literally in like five minutes, my whole family is, are on picture rocks. And these are great, um, again, in the block area for manipulatives. They can be part of a story, like my three kids could certainly be the three little, um, three little bears, like my oldest could be the oldest or the biggest and the middle, the middle-sized bear and the baby bear. So again, an awesome way to use lesson picks where everything is just right there, easily accessible. Another thing is like, I, <laughs> we follow the book, Einstein never used flashcards, but there's something to say about kids' pictures on a flashcard. So there, their, their, their name is in print, there's their picture. And I actually dump these in, I think it's the playing cards is what I dump these into. Okay. Um, and the kids' names are there so they can become familiar with their, their name in print. But what we do with these is that we lay these out on the ground. Out. Let me see if I can do this. We put these out as like a, um, a memory game. So we just do this and we make a memory game with our kids. And again, they love pictures of themselves and they're extremely motivating. So like they can take a turn and they flip and they flip. Oh, rats, not a match. So that's a great way to use these kind of flashcard playing cards things. And another way, you guys have, now have a headbands um, template, but we might just pull these and we put it on our head. And then this is great for social skills that they describe. Uh, it's someone who likes Batman. He's the youngest in the family. And then they, they um, try to guess what the answer is. So again, another great way um, to be able to use photographs and again you can do a clothes pin and then all of a sudden these can become puppets i know you guys have a puppet template too which is awesome they can become puppets or again they can use these as game pieces on a clothes pin as well so if you're playing Candyland, you know they can hop to the next piece if they want to um, he actually has clothes pins we just had the biggest hunt in the world to find clothes pins for tonight <laughs> no way oh my gosh we have tons it's part of our little curriculum that we do i'm trying to think what else do we do oh my gosh you can also play go fish with these playing cards so it's um you can just set up divide them up a classroom set super awesome and again it's such a great social skill they get to learn about each other describe each other a lot of language um opportunities with these playing cards so I'm going to move on next to the literacy things that we do. Oh, I have to show you this. This was hilarious. And I thought it was going to take off on our face, our social media page, but it didn't. But we also make finger puppets with um, the lesson picks picks. And you could use these with the photographs too. This was a leprechaun that had to go over the walk over and see how you're working on um, fine motor skills, how to walk over the rainbow, grab a coin, walk back, super cute. So you could just print out the pictures and just add two little holes to make legs um, for the photographs. 
So now I'm going to go on to some literacy activities. Yep. Um, how am I on time, guys? You're great. <laughs> okay. We'll warn you. Okay, thank you. We have a hook. Great. Okay, so <laughs> I recently read um, Lion and Mouse with my kids. And there's a nice little sequence there. It's a, what, an old school Aesop's fable one. Um, so I printed out the little tiny pictures. I think I used one inch and took away the border. And this is how you could have this in your classroom library where they take the clothespin and they say, okay, the mouse met, the mouse met the lion. Uh-oh, the lion caught the mouse. So they could story retell and use that fine motor skill to be able to do it. Up oh, the mouse came along. Um, the lion got trapped. Um, the mouse nibbled the lion free and it, you, they can just resequence the story that way. We also did this with Hungry Caterpillar. Super cute, right? Wow. Yep. Super cute. Wow, super cute. So here the egg, the little egg lay on a leaf and then out popped a little caterpillar. And we even, you don't have to, like kids can make anything be anything they want it to be. But we did have the kids color in the caterpillar on the um, clothespin because it just made it super cute. So they could move it this way so they could follow a sequence. And again, um, you could read the story. It's uh, center time or story time and then have these types of things in your classroom library or on the bookshelf. And you, it's amazing how motivated kids are when they get to do literacy activities that engage them with their hands too. Yeah, and um, you found you found all of those in the we have pre group stories. Of these. Yes, right? you guys have a folder for um, Hungry Caterpillar. Yeah, we, yeah. So we, I just dumped like them all and I put them in the sequence. Now that you have the grid layout, it made it way easy. I don't, you probably always had the grid layout, but I just found out. No, that we, no, that's not that. That's not that old. Okay, so then I was able to sequence everything in the correct order, so it made it a lot easier. Um, but again, this is in landscape. I printed it out. These might be half inch. So then, what else I did? Oh, and Emily and I are really, really into like being green, reducing, <laughs> using recycling. We're like really kind of anti worksheets. So you'll see a lot of the things we laminate because you can reuse them. But this is one thing we didn't <laughs> laminate. So you can reuse it, but you could probably fit 10 of these on one page. So here's the Hungry Caterpillar. I printed it in black and white because just for the sake of saving ink. But we call these hole punch sequencing. So you can say, oh, the caterpillar or the egg, and they hole punch. And then they go to the caterpillar. And then he ate through one apple, two pears. So they hole punch. And what's super awesome about hole punching, you can just take a little pipe cleaner and they can restory tell by lacing it and say, oh, the egg was first. And then out pop the caterpillar and you're lacing your little caterpillar through the holes. And then he I ate through one apple. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, he ate through two pairs next. So you can make that it very hands on um, with these little hole punch strips. We love making these for kids because it's super motivating. And hole punching is a great like um, pre-scissor skill activity. So while we're on it, three Billy Goats Gruff. We recently got the book from the library and Emily and I are always trying to think of ways that we can make um, literacy and learning more hands-on. Um, so again, Duplos are very popular in classrooms. So we did the Three Billy Goat Gruff and you guys have this file and we did, um, we did Duplos so that they can manipulate the Duplos to be say, oh, well, first there was the tiny goat, the baby goat was first. And then the, um, and then they could say, oh, and then he met the troll. And then next came the medium sized goat. And then he met the troll. So they're pulling apart, pushing, but they're still resequencing and telling their stories. And we just printed these out. I think these might be one or one and a half inch on a Duplo. And then just use packaging tape. And then what's awesome about these, you, you don't have to, these are such classic stories. Um, you use them every year as a therapist or a teacher. And so you'll always have these in like your own little personal library of stories. So another thing we did, um, my time is good, right? <laughs> you, are, you are good. You have about two more demos, I think. Okay, so here we have again the clothespins, but here's another great way. This is Little Red Hen. And there's a bunch of different versions of Little Red Hen. But a great way to do this is you can use bingo markers to tell the story. These re retell the story. I'm not laying it flat. Or they could take Play-Doh and say, okay, first came the little red hen. And they could smush the plate, roll it and smush it because we have it laminated. 
And then she brought her three little chicks and first they planted seeds. So every time you tell part of the story, they can roll the Play-Doh and smush it on the page. Um, so Lori has used that same technique for bingo covers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Right? Yes, we use Play-Doh for bingo. Oh, I love, oh, that, there's not enough Play-Doh in the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so worksheets. You can use several things for worksheets. I, I believe the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot have these like um, poly envelopes that you can slip things into. But again, I laminate things because then I have it forever. So I'll just print out a coloring sheet uh, from Lesson Picks. So we're gonna be talking about spring and flowers. So again, we could use the Play-Doh to color in. So it's like, oh, you have the stem, they could roll it out and put the stem on the thing. But what I love these for are wiki sticks. I love um, using these to clear my space here. So um, they could trace the picture with wiki sticks where they're pushing and they're twisting and they're bending and they're doing all these fun, fine motor things and you're not throwing the paper out when you're done because you can reuse it. So there's the stem, they could fill it in so they could roll and twist. Hey, Julie, and fill Julie, in the I I, I, Lori knows this well, but I am not familiar with wiki sticks. Can you, uh, okay. are they sticky? Do they stick to the? So wiki sticks is a, um, it is a food grade wax. So a kid could eat it. It happens, you know, in the world of early childhood, kids eat things they shouldn't. It's a food grade wax and they come in huge packs. We bought all these little packs to give out at Halloween, but, um, all different colors and what it, it's food grade wax on yarn. You can, you can cut them short if you want, but they come in like these, I guess, six inch long pieces, but you can twist, they smush together. They kind of stick to each other. So you can have a kid ball up, you know, if you're doing the life cycle of um, a frog, they could ball these up and stick it here for the eggs and it sticks and they're reusable. So you can use them over and over and over again. And they come in every color. They're awesome. They should be in every classroom. You can trace letters with it. Um, Where do you get them? wikisticks.com yeah. and okay. in the summer they usually have a really good sale 50% off for teachers okay all right the last thing I'll share is if people use handwriting without tears I use this visual for the wet dry try chalkboards and I've always used this for classrooms I work in because there's that wet dry try for letter sequencing so this gives the because the kids always grab the chalk first or the paper towel first this gives them the sequence without being adult dependent to say okay it's wet you do the sponge first then you dry it and then you try it very cool and i think this is on i think i loaded that on your share as well but that's it for now <laughs> cool well that's a ton that's absolutely wonderful right that was amazing yes you have a lot of great ideas for the early childhood classroom yeah absolutely and and um we know you do relatively uh, um low incidence uh, severe Yes. Stuff too, right? Yes. Um, we have a niche in both areas. It's I think everything flourished in early childhood when we had our own kids, and then but um, primarily my career has been in um, clients with complex needs. Well, very very cool. I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you're also on our our uh, AT group, which is great. Thanks for um, having me, guys. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about that on Friday, right? Yes. Yes, okay. yes. I'll have lots of, uh, as an OT, we look at participation um, for clients with complex needs and how can we, how can they access their curriculum and participate in a school setting? So that'll Excellent. be the focus. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks, uh, bye, bye, Julie. And bye. if you stick around, we're going to all, we're all going to do a group hug at the end. So stick Alrighty. around. All right. So let me see. This. All right. There you go. Uh, so uh, that's awesome. There was a Love lot, it. a lot of great ideas. It's a lot. We gotta, we gotta um, get this down. It looks like we're gonna have to give at least ten to twelve minutes a piece. I love it. All right, so Katie, you got about ten or twelve minutes. Are you there? I'm here. Hi. Hi, Katie. How are you? Good. So Katie is our favorite Alaskan SLP. I think that's safe to say, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't Definitely. know who else it would be. There's not that many of us, so I'm. I'm gonna and I've met them all. Right? I've met them all. <laughs> Unless they're in Nome, I've met them. So, um, but no, listen, uh, Katie's a uh, friend of ours, uh, Speech Path, um, big in Nisla when she was back in college, got a name for herself, and now she's a celebrity. Mm -hmm. right. is, is your is your blog still as uh, people still? 
coming at you all the time from the blog posts and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of students and lots of just people wanting to move to Alaska, which is always cool. So. Cool. And you're in um, Matsu Valley, right? Yes, in Wasilla. Everyone knows it because of Sarah Palin, but it's also just a super pretty place to live. So it is. It is. I think that one. <laughs> so we uh, we did get to come up, go up there and do the training for uh, Palmer, right? We weren't we in Palmer for the training? Yes. So that was awesome. So uh, I'm gonna turn over the uh, the floor to you here, and you're gonna show me whatever you got. All right. Cool. All right. All right, so most of what I want to show you is um, some physical stuff that I like. For example, a lot of this is what I use this week, but I also want to share my screen and show you how I use um, a lot of the features of your website because I use your stuff every day, all day. Um, I currently work in a private practice, but even when I worked in a school, um, it was always great to see um, to see how well it worked all day long, especially when you see 25, 30 kids a day. Now I see maybe 10 kids a day, which is great. So um, <clears throat> one of the first things I love to use, and I pretty much use it with a lot of my early kids, is your um, Pete. Um, position Pete. Pete. Position, yeah, Pete. position Pete. So I use that guy all the time, um, and I love making, um, I have this book that I read to a lot of kids, um, that I just have a copy, like I have like 10 copies all the time, and we'll color him, or, um, and I love him mostly because it's a lot of my kids, especially in the two to four, two to five year olds or kids with, um, you know, more significant language impairments, you know, learning those core words in, on, off, um, next to, you know, those are huge, especially they can translate to a lot of different um, settings. So position P, I love to use them. I make lots of books. Um, I love making. Uh, hey, hey, of Katie, before we, yeah. before we go on, can we explain position Pete to people who yeah. don't know him? Do. So yeah. uh, position Pete is a request by a speech path to draw the same character in the same clothes and all the positional adjectives. Yeah. So in, on, under, there's a whole a whole section of them. Oh, under clip art. And yeah, there he is. And, uh, and Lori drew him, right, in all those positions. And uh, now if you go to the sharing center and just search for position Pete, or, Pete. You'll, or just Pete, you'll get all kinds of uh, all kinds of goodies, including, did you share those? Yeah, I think all of the yeah. stuff that I'm showing you, I have shared. Awesome, right. awesome. So all right, so back to, back to you. Yeah, so usually I'll read a book or I'll show him the little picture of the dude and a lot of times I'll cut him out, like I'll cut out just the main um, main dude and then I'll hide him around my room and I have a little um, black light that I'll turn the lights off and we'll try to find him. So sometimes I'll color Pete with a little uh, glow in the dark marker um, and we'll try to find him and I'll have him say where he is or like I'll make a large picture thing and I'll have a box and then all the things at the bottom are just Pete. And then I'll tell them where to put him, and then I'll have them tell me where to put him. Um, and so then it's a little bit of a game. Um, so that's one of the things I love about position P, which I think whenever I tell somebody about lesson picks, I'm like, that's usually where I start because that's a fun hook for a lot of people. Um, another one that I use for <clears throat> pretty much all my clients, I forgot to take this kid's name off, but um, I can't remember what these are called. Um, Those are called I'm Working For. Yeah, I am working for. However, I use them as a schedule because I'll put, um, sometimes I'll put the kid's picture right here. And right. then these um, I use as like, a, here are all the options that you can do, especially when I'm doing patient-led therapy. Um, not necessarily a schedule, like we have to do this first, this first. Um, if they get to pick, I put all of the options and then they either use tokens or a marker and they mark it out as we do it. And I have this whole, I have one for almost all my patients here. But um, pretty much use it as a schedule slash uh, helpful tool to kind of help me get through a 45-minute session with a two-year-old. So there you go. There you go. that's helpful. Um, for my older Arctic kids, pretty much every time they come in, I always start with a um, picture find. You know what they're called on there? Yeah, find the picture. Yeah. Find the picture. And um, I'll pick kind of what the top thing I'm working on, whether it's S blends or initial, medial, final, whatever R. Um, I'll kind of make one of those and that way while I'm getting myself or oriented or especially when I was in schools when I had a group I'd give them to all the kids and they would start on that and it would be a race to who could finish first that way I could get their notes out I could get my stuff out and I could kind of orient myself too cool Next and you step. use the uh you use the sound finder to uh to get those on the fly yes or I have um lots of trays in my in my personal Same trays you used when to be called have, collections yes Yes. When I had a, when I had an SLPA, one of the things I asked her to do in any downtime, I was like, 
I need you to make lesson picks trays. So now I have the most amazing tray collections, whatever, um, of like every sound I could imagine so I can quickly make stuff. And that was the most helpful way to use an SLPA that I've come across. Perfect. So, um, anyway, that's another one that I love. Um, I think it's newer, but your jobbers, your bingo dauber pages, um, I love those. <laughs> Again, I use it as a transition activity or an activity that, um, especially if we're doing something structured, something unstructured throughout the um, session, especially with some of my younger kiddos, um, I will do, I will often do a, um, like this is a theme about, for example, I was reading a book about tools or a book about the seasons. Um, like I read this little book about snowflakes and then all of the pictures on your bingo dauber page were about winter. And so we would talk about a picture and they would daub it out. I have these super wonderful bingo daubers. Yep. <laughs> They're perfectly round and perfectly perfect for your bingo daubers templates. Um, and so I use those a lot to kind of supplement a book or to supplement an activity that we're doing outside of a lesson picks um, thing. So other stuff that I do, um, I like using your puzzle cards for um, minimal pairs. You are going to be so excited about tomorrow's or Wednesday's show. What's that one? Well, we, we might be talking about some additions to that. Ooh, good. Yeah. Because I love the minimal pairs feature for the most part. Sometimes I have a hard time finding them, but, but for the most part, there's, it's super nice that you can pick, like, I want final P's or, you know, top versus pop or final K versus final initial T versus initial K. Um, and I can quickly make them. And sometimes I don't even cut out the puzzle piece. Sometimes I'll use like a little um, stamp and I'll have them stamp each side. Um, but if I have lots of time, I'll cut them out and make an actual puzzle piece. But oftentimes I don't. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, and I, I like using your, um, <clears throat> what are these called? Pattern strips. Pattern, pattern strips. I like them for actual, the purpose of pattern teaching, you know, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, B, or A, B, C, A, B, C. I think that's what yeah. And, um, a, B, B, A. Yeah. yeah. So I was just trying to think of all the ones I use. Um, but I think using them for articulation therapy. Um, and then I'll actually, especially if the kid's a little older, like I actually used this with a kid earlier this week. And then on the back, we will write our own A, B patterns. Um, and I will have them write it and I'll write one. Um, and we'll use, like this kid was for um, an R, R words. So I would, I had them make the pattern and then I had them go back and say each one. I was like, all right, we're just going to say it right. over and over. And every time they would put one on there, they'd have to say it over and over again. And so it's great for getting a high number of articulation trials. So um, I love that. Um, trying to think of what else I have. I don't know how much time I have, but. Um, you got time for one more. What else you got? Well, I was mostly going to share my screen. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Go share your screen. Okay. Let's Wait, you want to show lesson picks on our show? Yes. All right. Yeah. How dare Go I? <laughs> Let's see here. Can you see that? We can. Okay. So I love using my sharing center. I mean, I try to share as many things as I can that I really like using, mostly to help myself find them. But I also use your favorites feature as a way to um, save things that I want to recreate. For example, this charm bracelet thing that someone made. I did not make this, but I was like, that is a great idea. <laughs> so I saved it. And now I've made stuff about charms or I made a, I picked a necklace one. Hey, Katie, can you uh, control scroll in so you can zoom in on that so we can see it a little better? There you go. Katie, I'm really glad you brought this up because a lot of people don't know about that favorite section. Yeah, I kind of use it as my own little feed for stuff Book that marks, I Yeah, I did too. So that's that's Tally. She's done lots of stuff. Um, how does the charm bracelet work? Do they put those on it or? Yeah, like I'll ha I, I usually actually cut these out. And when I've done it before, I actually pick charms that are a little easier to cut out. And I'll actually just cut out the picture and it's a little easier to tape on there. Um, gotcha. So that's super helpful. Um, and then cool. I have my my tray full of these custom pictures that I made based on the social thinking guys. Um, all of the, I think these are the thinkables, the good guys. Um, and I like that they say mine, especially when I'm trying to customize something or even when I'm trying to share something, you guys notify me that it's not. 
Um, yeah. So you can now, if it says mine, you can't put it in the sharing center, which makes sense, yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah, it would be a, a licensee of those symbols. But uh, yeah. I have to catch myself on kids' names. Sometimes I'll name the material after them. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll have to catch myself not to share those. But um, yeah. those got good. it. Very good. Um, All right. Well, th- and, that, and that, by the way, that template there was uh, large and small pictures is what she made the uh, charm bracelet with. Yes, which I love. So yeah. anyway, but yeah, my tray, I use that all the time. <laughs> so many things in my trays. It's really great. So I like a lot of the features and a lot of the mine stuff that I can have. Well, there's, Kay, there's a Katie in there. And there is. I, I make my own stickers of myself frequently. Very cool. <laughs> all right. Well, we we um, we appreciate you taking the time to, to share everything with us. Yeah, no problem. Um, I have to say, I'm really impressed with both Julie and Katie as far as taking our materials and doing something totally different with them. I was, I was blown away when Katie, you had, I am working for, and usually I think of that as like an oh, end Lord. goal and then the tasks yeah. for it. And you used it for the student's picture and then the tasks below it or a choice board below it. And I thought that's really out of it's the really box. really good idea. Yep. I love that thinking. And Julie, I really love the hole puncher with the story strips going right across, I can imagine just giving them to my class, sitting there as we retell a story, they can go through and punch or, or move their clip along with the I story. I your uh, leprechaun guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally <laughs> salient. <laughs> All right, very so cool. Great well, idea. Guys, thank you both. Um, we are gonna- You're making such an awesome software and program and it's awesome. It's all good. Get affordable, thank you. Affordable, thank you. yes. <laughs> We are going to show one new, we're only going to have time for one new template. Yes, very okay. quickly. All right, so ladies, thank you. Stick around if you'd like, but turn your, uh, I can turn you off where you can. There you go. Bye bye. Bye, Katie. All right. All right, so we're going to share something new. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. So um, we've put up several new templates yep. in our material wizard, and one of them we're going to talk about today is the clothespin cards. All the new materials are user request. So these were your suggestions. Closed cards has been suggested by a number of people um, and different ways to make it work for them. Currently, or I'm sorry, previously, right. uh, closed pin cards were a counting tool. So it would put the quantity of pictures in there and the children would, mat- would count the pictures and they could stick a closed pin on the corresponding numeral. Right. Um, but there's lots of other ways to use so these. so many other ways. All right. So let's, let's uh, change our camera for a second. Okay. All right. Let's see. There's a Lenny over here. All right. So looks like half a Lenny. It's hat. Well, I used him as a clothespin before we found the clothespins. So. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's talk through this. So here is a new one. So this is a. These are under clothespin literacy cards. We had to divide into two different clothespin cards. One under math and one under literacy because the. Um, questions about this template were completely different. Right. If you do a search on the interface, and we'll show you in a second, if you type in closed pin, it'll show them both. But these are the ones where you have a lot more control, mm-hmm. right? So this one uh, is, I made this one. So this is a, a set of brown bear cards, and maybe you want to put the colors at the bottom. So the, the you know, they might, there was blue horse or a, I think it's a yellow duck, right? It's a yellow it's a ye- duck. Yellow duck. Um, so that's that's one option is you can actually control exactly what pictures go in all of the the spots. So that is picture to picture on so, the choices. Correct. That is that is picture to that is um, yes. So I'll, I'll show you. That's the manual one. Okay. Okay. This one is the number of syllables. So it just says one through four, and then it puts the pictures on there. And so you choose words that are one through four syllables, and you put your um, you put your clothes pin on it like this. Yep. Yes. Those numbers are static. Yep. So if you need more than four, you're gonna be on your own. Uh, this one is um, this is another one where it's manual, and you can put exactly the pictures you want in it. Um, is that no? That's not. This is the one where we we're matching the um, we're matching the word to the picture. Right. Right. So this has the word that's from the picture on the top, and then it's got the correct picture somewhere on it. And these other two are randomly from whatever else was in your tray. And so that will work there. And it automatically does the randoming for you. It does. You do need three pictures in your tray. Minimum. Every minimum card. of three. Yes. Three. And then, so this is, uh, this is the opposite of that. So on this one, you'll see you've got uh, the picture and then the words. 
So the correct word is here and two other words from your tray are randomly here as well. So I, I think it would be great if we showed them how to make these. Okay, let's go. Okay. Go real quick. Real quick. I know we're going to break our half an hour, but it was our first time and we're not that far over the half an hour. So let's do this and this. All right. So how do we make these? Uh, we make these by going into lesson picks and we've got, I'm going to clear my tray and let's just want to pick a story like uh student old lady stuff. Does it really matter? No. Okay. So we'll pick um, any story. Okay. And you'll notice I'm in the stories and song section. So if you didn't know this was here, we have a whole section of stories that are pre-grouped. All the characters and settings are in here. And uh, yes, yeah, so we'll go back to the old lady, Swallow to Clover. And I'm just going to drag some pictures into the tray. It doesn't really matter what's in here right now uh, at this point to show you how this works, right? Sticking with our leprechaun theme. I know it's a month late, but that's <laughs> that's life, right? And uh, let's see, uh, Shamrock. So we'll hit create materials, and over here we're going to type in C L O T, and you'll see here are the original counting cards, and here are the literacy cards. So these are the new ones. If we go in here, we'll see the other, um, we'll see the other folks, or the other pictures in here. And right here we have our options. So this will be old lady as a title. And now I've got different options. I've got manual where it literally will place the pictures exactly in the order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine through 12, et cetera. It will put them exactly in there in the order that you have them in the tray. This way, it places them, um, the pictures, one, two, three, four, and then it places the words underneath them. So that's why it says picture and word. This one says word with picture, so the word is in the center and the pictures are at the bottom. And then syllables, it just shows one through four at the bottom and the pictures. Uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, picture and word here. And uh, hello, Luke, Lucas popped up there. Um, I will choose a different font. When I hit finish, it's going to put the, the correct word underneath each one and then randomly to choose two other words. So you'll see here, this will pop up. We've got uh, the butterfly and then two other words from the pictures in our tray are randomly placed left and right. So the flowers here and two other things are as well. Okay, so that's how that one works. The other ones I think are, um, are pretty straightforward, but let me go ahead and show word picture because it's so easy to do. We'll hit back and remake this the opposite way. You'll see that the words are now in the center of the, the uh, card and the pictures are at the bottom. So there's lots of different things you can do with this. And uh, it's probably one of the more, one of the more interesting you know, materials we've made in a while because of that random option and the fact that it's doing some work for you. It's kind of like one of our learning games where we kind of automate part of it. Yeah, right? exactly. Like the dominoes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, that one's in the in the uh, in the wizard now. Yeah. And you'll find things in the sharing center that Lori shared. Right. I had a lot of fun creating things with this. You don't have to use close pins. You can use bingo markers or wiki sticks. Wiki sticks. Or pretty much anything you want to to mark off. It's yeah. kind of like a multiple choice card. You can use little Lenny pen holders. They turn sideways. Yeah. yeah. I like your Lenny pen holder. That's all I have. Very creative. I didn't have any clothespins. I'd love to see more out of the box thinking from um, in our sharing center. Right. People saying how they well, use them. Well, I have a feeling Julie's going to use this every day. Why? Because she uses clothespins on every single thing she showed us. There <laughs> she was a clothespin. Absolutely. So she's going to be all over it. as well as yep. the language piece. So, yeah. All right. So I think that's gonna that's gonna do it for our show and tell. A lot of great ideas today. I'm Absolutely. Very happy about and this. I think we can't do three people. No. Not in a half an hour. We can do two. Okay. All right. So we're learning. So guys, uh, thank you for bearing with us as we learn. Uh, we will not be here tomorrow night, but we will be here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. And then we'll probably go to once a week on this. Cool. On Tuesday. Now, very quickly, we had a question from Allison. Okay. Who wanted to know, can you use this for beginning sounds? You can use this for beginning sounds. Yes. So yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, the way I made one already oh, is in it? the sharing center. Yeah, well, let me share my screen and, and I'll show it. It's all right. Um, oh. I I used the letters from the alphabet folder as clip art. 
You can use it by words and just change it to the beginning letter, but the letters will be much smaller. So it depends on the, the age of like your kids. Find the eight words? Um, actually, the next one over, learning letter sounds. You can see the alligator. And gotcha. You can see you can choose the initial choose the initial letter on that one. There you go. And there are, there are other options here as well. So if you look in the sharing center, you might just look for things from Lori because she added a bunch today. But uh, you will also find other examples there as well. All right. So any any other questions in there? I don't see any questions in the actual um, in the actual webinar. And I don't see any um, in the Facebook post. So I think we're good. Uh, I think, I don't know exactly how to get back to the chat window. Uh, oh, we do have some. I'm glad I looked. Uh, it was great. All right, so these are all just positive. They love us. So that's Yay. good. All right. My, all right, my guys, day. listen, I appreciate your, uh, your time tonight. Uh, we will try and make sure we can get it in a half an hour next time. We are a little over. Not that bad. That's okay. All right. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on today. All right. We'll see I you all. I look forward to the next one. Yeah. We'll see you all on Wednesday, same time, and uh, uh, good luck and have fun. Bye. Bye.